Thank you. I'm, uh, I don't have any of the answers to that, but uh, we are really wondering. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about our learning journey. Uh, and uh, the last year for us has really been a uh, quite intense learning journey. And um, coming here today, I realized that now I know more how little I know. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, I work with the Brønnøysund Register Center. We have a lot of uh, central government registers up there. Uh, but I work with a platform called Altin. Altin uh, was uh, created 15 years ago in Norway, and basically our mission is to break down silos between different or different government silos, but also silos between government and private uh, businesses. Uh, I can tell you the biggest challenge in breaking down silos is not technological, I think. I think uh, actually managing to work across organi organizations towards a common goal is a really difficult task. We are doing it every day along with 53 other government agencies. But uh, yeah, the technology discussions are basically the easiest ones there. The organizational interoperability is a big hurdle and I think that's some maybe the blockchain scene is also experiencing right now. So it's quite, quite interesting to to see how m maybe some of our old experience and knowledge basically is turning out being very useful right now when we're trying to enter the blockchain scene. So that was a little bit of background. I work uh, now mainly with innovation and we are allowed to try out stuff, to learn, to try to understand what's happening around us, how can we adapt to this, how will this affect our core mission uh, in future and such, so uh, I'm really lucky guy, that's um, uh, for sure. Uh, last, or in the fall 2017, uh, we got like a really clear feeling that there's a lot of stuff happening and we, we really don't understand what it is. Uh, so, um, and we have a long tradition for basically interacting with the market, interacting with everyone. So we, uh, we um, uh, put out a request for information in the market, asking basically everyone out there, what should we focus on? What should we be learning? Wh how should our strategies and visions be uh, shaped by what is happening in the world right now? And we got a lot of interesting answers. One of them came from uh, IBM. And they proposed that we do a small project, really small, uh, along with Oslo Met, the university in Oslo, uh, in regards of exploring the possibilities with blockchain in government. And at the same time as we were, were like evaluating all those answers and stuff, uh, the Norwegian Technology Advisory Board that advises the parliament in technology questions, they came with a quite um, tough statement, I, I might say, because they said like registers like the ones in Brønnøysund uh, might become obsolete. <laughs> So it was quite easy for us to, to actually get the acceptance and start exploring this area. Uh, we um, had like quite a few discussion when it came to use case because obviously as a register we work a lot with infrastructures of trust being like the authoritative data source that everyone goes to to get the truth. Uh, but um, we figured out, uh, and we also saw quite a lot of resistance in the traditional register um, uh, parts of our business. So we had to kind of find a use case that wasn't that dangerous. And we ended up in, on unlisted shares. 
Uh, unlisted shares uh, is a quite fun thing, I think, because um, uh, the law says that there should be transparency into who owns what company. Today, basically, you have to go to the company itself and you will probably get a paper record of who owns the shares in the company. Uh, it is also very difficult to get into investing in unlisted companies unless you know someone or you are connected and, and such. And um, that might also be a problem. The, you can say the access to capital. Uh, also, this hits the startup scene. So we started exploring that matter and um, we figured quite soon that this is far too complex. So basically what we did, we reduced quite a lot of uh, complexity in order to do a practical proof of concept or prototype or what, what we could call it. Um, it's out on GitHub for everyone to download and check out if you feel like. Uh, we managed to make a running solution, but we, as I said, we had to reduce a lot of complexity. Actually, we had to reduce too much of the complexity for it to give a lot of value. So right now, we are uh, on the beginning of the second wave, uh, trying to basically solve some of the next problems on our backlog. Um, and I think we would have to go quite a few rounds before we get there with a scalable solution that might actually be implemented. But there's a lot of interesting stuff happening. So uh, what value could this give and how can this be democratizing, which is the topic here today? Um, and um, now I'm first going to say something concrete when it comes to this use case. And then I might uh, try to come with some of my own reflections of what I've learned in this process. Uh, building a common infrastructure for unlisted shares could give quite a big value because um, that infrastructure might be used for trading we're not gonna, the government isn't building any trading solutions, but the infrastructure might be used for that. And I think a lot of the answer also to the regulatory questions that are being discussed here today is basically that the government should be a kind of secure infrastructure provider that provides a common infrastructure where private companies, different government bodies could basically thrive and innovate on top of that. Some, somehow, just like the road network. Um, and, um, yeah, we've seen such an uh, infrastructure for unlisted shares could be used for trading. It could give huge value to scale it, out, scale it up. Uh, we've been um, talking a bit with the uh, EU about this, and um, they're kind of interested in uh, talking more. And um, uh, you can get transparency, like, say, to actually see who owns a company today. As I told you, it's really difficult. And uh, there is a big need with the journalists and the researchers, actually, uh, to be able to understand better how ownership structures actually are working in order to understand markets and, and to be able to actually make the markets better in future. So we have trading, we have transparency, but then also each single unlisted company has their own democracy within and their own rules and regulations. Um, and uh, what we've seen is like, okay, if we make an infrastructure like this, the companies themselves might actually use them as well for doing their um, like shareholders uh, uh, using their actual influence uh, in the company in new ways. And 
now I'm coming over to the more like soft, my personal reflections like, or visions that I've uh, got during this one year. And um, what I see is I have a really great uh, pizza joint close by where I live. Uh, if they would end in like liquidity problems, I would love to support them because I really want my pizza. Today, that is really hard to do. But if we actually got such an infrastructure, it could be uh, like the uh, unlisted share market or the share market in general could actually be kind of democratized. It could be available to a lot of new people, small-time investors and such. And I think that could do something really good with our market dynamics. Because I can say personally, today I don't own any shares. I don't own, even own any crypto. Uh, um, and um, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person that would never get into that. Simply because it's too hard. It's too complex. So it, could we simplify that? Could we get more, basically, owners? Could we spread the influence of companies on more hands? Uh, I think that... Could, uh, I don't know what effects that could have, but I think the effects could be quite interesting. So, yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to move on a bit from the share part now. Unless, but if anyone has any questions on the shares, they can, uh, you can actually just shout out right now for my sake. It's all out on GitHub. Uh, there's also a report there on... Um, 30, 40 pages that we wrote. It's in Norwegian. Uh, but feel free to go there, check it out, take, get in touch if you feel like you might contribute. Yeah, uh, just, and we're also now in the process of partnering up with others uh, in, um, in the continuation of developing this use case. So now we have the Norwegian Tax Authority aboard. They're really interested in this because the, obviously they want data on which shares are, uh, are dealt with and uh, who's selling, who's buying, stuff like that. Uh, and we're also trying to get some of the banking, finance, ERP uh, actors together with us in order to kind of see the entire ecosystem as a whole uh, while we develop this use case further. Uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about what I think, uh, like the democratizing aspects of technology or empowering aspects of technology. That's great. I have five minutes left, so that was my plan. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, the shares, uh, you, you can get like you can open up ownership to new kinds of uh, people. That would be a democratizing effect in itself. Uh, we work a lot with trust infrastructures and registers, as I said, and interoperability. How can... Um, uh, oh, let me see how, how I can put... Uh, I think a big challenge today is the complexity that surrounds us as humans. I think technology is becoming less and less human friendly. Uh, and they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And uh, I could just apply to that. It's also paved with good, great design. <laughs> um, and, um, and I think we have to take a step back now, in the coming years, and really ask ourselves, which kind of society do we want to live in? Do we want to keep the Nordic model or the Norwegian model, where we have a right for free education, where everyone has the right to free healthcare? If we want those values, we have to secure them. Do we want to carry on having a democracy? It's a 
quite, most of you probably feel that's a really obvious question, but what I observe is that there is a lot of attacks on democracy. Like we've been talking about how uh, earlier today about uh, Brexit and uh, American elections, good examples. Democracy is actually under threat. There are big corporations that basically has more power than any government, any democratic body. They are kind of democratic, but only the owners have the influence. How can we solve those things? And um, I believe that uh, I wouldn't say blockchain technology because I basically don't know enough about technology to say blockchain technology at all. Uh, but uh, I think like future technology might be used as a common infrastructure for all uh, to try on and we can basically virtualize in that infrastructure or basic fundamental values and principles that we should live by. And um, into that comes like concepts like my, my data. You can see the common trading platforms. Uh, I think Materium is really interesting. You can see how the ownership of things and basically the data about things can be shared in a common platform. But I'm going to end with the, like, the big problem here. It's not the technology. It's us working together. And um, I think I'm going to end it with that and say, feel free to get in touch. <laughs>